What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbridge Garage and this is the Monster Moto 212 kit from Go Power Sports. Now one of the biggest questions on our channel about mini bikes is what is our favorite mini bike? Now our number one mini bike on the list would be a Trailmaster MB200 or the Hurricane. The Hurricane is basically a MB200 with a front disc brake kit on it but if you do have the MB200 Go Power Sports does sell the kit now to add front disc brakes to it. That's really the only difference between the two mini bikes. But it is by far the best mini bike on the market. Full suspension, it has front and rear hydraulic disc brakes if you get the Hurricane. And uh, it's just a great platform. Our second favorite mini bike of all time, and we've tested old mini bikes, new, everything, was the Monster Moto 212. Now the Monster Moto 212 is a low set mini bike. It does have front suspension uh, and a rigid rear. It comes normally with a 212 and then it has a CVT kit. But our favorite thing was how you set on it. It's a real low set mini bike, but it's a very comfortable mini bike, especially for a big guy. It's got the larger frame diameter, like one and a quarter frame. It looks beefy. And it's a very rigid frame, very strong. So this will always be our number two until something else comes out. Our last on the list, absolutely bottom mini bike is a Coleman. I do, that's why we don't use them anymore. They have a very bad front end angle. They wanna like push the front end. I highly recommend if you're wanting to go with a budget mini bike to do this kit. Whether you have a son or a daughter, a grandchild that you're wanting to do this kit, or if you wanna learn yourself, this is the best way because you literally have to put the entire kit together and you're gonna know every nut and bolt about your mini bike at the end of the day. So it's a really good learning tool uh, for you or your kids. So the only thing you're gonna to need to finish off this kit is gonna be an engine. And whether you go with a Tilson, a Duromax, or a Predator, that's the only piece of the puzzle that you're gonna need. It's just the engine. This kit even comes with the CVT, it comes with the chain. It's a full roller ready to go set other than the engine. So uh, that's one thing to note. And if you're on a budget, you can buy this mini bike for around the same price as you can get a Coleman but you're just not gonna have an engine, which the engines on the Coleman's don't have a lot of upgrades. Uh, they kind of have like a muck crankshaft size and stuff. So in my opinion, this is the best way to do it if you're on a budget. Buy the mini bike, put it together, learn it, maybe do some upgrades, and then do the engine on it. So what we're gonna be installing is the new Duromax dual fuel engine. I really wanna see how propane performs in the woods, on the street. We're also gonna be testing out in the next video how long you can go on a one pound bottle which is the smallest propane bottle you can get i'm real curious of how much just wide open throttle on the road time you can get and uh, that's going to vary of course because if you're off-road your rpms are going to be going up and down the engine is going to be in and out load so this test is like worst case scenario you know wide open throttle how long will it last so without further ado we're going to put this entire kit together we're only going to upgrade two things that this kit uh, doesn't come with and that would be a juggernaut CVT even if you're not uh, removing the governor I highly recommend a juggernaut and the reason why it's a roller weight style dri a drive pulley it works way more efficiently than the old 30 series Comet because old Comets have like a sling weight style they get a lot of heat in them so you're going to get better belt life with a juggernaut even if you're not removing the governor but let's face it if you're a true man you're going to remove that governor uh, but we're gonna do a full upgrade path on this propane engine and fully build it to see what kind of power we can make with propane. So without further ado, we're gonna install everything on this kit. We'll show you piece by piece how to install it and uh, upgrade that juggernaut pulley as well as put a Harley Davidson LED headlight on it uh, to get rid of that halogen. So let's get into it.
So we have one last thing to do and that is hook up the throttle to the throttle plate. Everything else is done. There's oil in the engine. We don't have any gas in it. We're gonna run it solely off propane. Um, but the Duramax throttle plates do not come with a throttle eyelet. Now every Predator and Tillotson on their throttle brackets have these cable hold downs and these throttle eyelets. Son of a gun. Uh, they, for some reason, do not put these on it. So I'm gonna contact Duramax today and ask them if they could at least throw in these in a in a ziploc or something because this is really frustrating for people getting these engines you can't hook up a throttle to them without having these spare ends laying around now i have like 20 or 30 each of these but we do this every day you guys probably aren't going to have that so but all predators have two because you can run the cable either in the side or in the back so it's going to have two of each so just always take the one you're not using off of the like a predator and keep them for this occasion but uh, we're going to pull the air box to install these so first is off with the throttle stop we don't need that in our life this one don't even have the thread inserts for the hold down normally you'd run this screw through there and it would set either here or here so they're not even putting the thread insert so basically duromax needs to do a new one of these with the thread inserts because the eyelets either go here your throttle eyelets either go here or back here so that's the only issue with this is there's no way to hook up a throttle and that's very frustrating in my opinion a few moments later so this is what i've done to make this throttle plate be able to hook up to a throttle. Uh, this eyelet is off of a Predator, and if you flip it over, you just have that C-clip, and you slide it, the hole is already there, you slide it in and pop the C-clip on, and then you can hook up the throttle there. And then I had to uh, basically drill this out to a 930 seconds, and then put a thread insert of a five mil for the screw. So if you don't have a thread inserter, you're kind of going to be left stuck on that. But again, I'm going to contact Euromax and see if they can fix it. Because the reason they do this is because these are made for generators and pressure washers. But that's not what the world's using them for. So I'm just trying to make sure you guys have what you need to be able to run these engines. I can hook up the throttle. And so the reason I did all that was basically now I can take this and run the throttle housing under that there. Tighten down this Phillips head screw here. I'm actually going to switch that Phillips head out for this little 7 mil where I can really get a good tighten on that puppy. Now our throttle's held really well, and then hook it up just like a normal Predator with a 10 mil wrench to break this loose. Loosen that Phillips head, and I'll do an up close shot. Slide the cable housing through. Now, we have a throttle. Okay, so I got on the horn with Duramax, and they're gonna fix the throttle plate issue um, so very soon they'll come with the eyelets I came up I didn't film any of it because I'm ready to be done this is a one day build so um, I came up with that propane holder and I actually like it I think it's I will weld it later if I keep propane on this because it's bolted with lock washers and stuff on the bolts but it's not quick release is the only downside and uh, I would like it to be hot swappable tanks and have two tanks on the back at all time. But we got a full tank of gas. I'm gonna leave the gas shut off. Uh, we had to grab this muffler, so crusty boy, because it's got a side firing exhaust pipe. This one points straight back at the fender and I'm afraid it'll melt it down. This is off Ms. Redbeard's tiller. Sorry, it's got a Tillotson on it. Uh, you can see this one just fires directly back. So we gotta pull this off 
and slap this muffler on it to fire it out the side because I'm not wanting to do exhaust right now. Well, let's face it, I want to do exhaust, but one step at a time. It looks sweet. I remember how comfortable these bikes are. Like, go watch. If you're if you really support me, go watch the <laughs> video. Uh, we had a blast on these. It's super comfortable. It's like you're sitting on. You're so low on it. It's <coughs> oh, come on. You're so low on it. It's it feels so sturdy. Which one? Octane booster or just just clean it up a little bit? For when we do run gas. Clean it up. If you keep it clean, then you don't have to clean it. Yeah, so Amsoil, of course, we're a full Amsoil family now. Uh, this stuff, I normally add it to the jugs of fuel because it, if you do have ethanol in your fuel, which this does, this has a little bit of ethanol, it'll help keep it from, you know, kind of kills the ethanol. That's probably more than enough. That's, we gave it a good gurgle and it'll keep valves clean and stuff so that's the only reason i'm doing it so we got a like around about a half empty bottle of propane so we're gonna ride it for a little bit on propane and then gasoline so what we're gonna do hit the on button i'm gonna purge shut the choke purge it Turn the choke off. It ain't got no gas in it. We need to get the real one on. I didn't hook up the headlight because I need to do a battery. This engine does have a charging coil, but we'll be building it soon and getting rid of the uh, electric car flywheel. I'm gonna let her warm up. Your foot pegs are more like a dirt bike on these bikes, where like most of the bikes are out front. But she feels real nice. Like it, it does feel like it has a little bit more power. How much? I don't know. This is a you know bone stock engine. Forget how fun a stock engine is. This bike is the most comfortable. Like it's a hardtail, but it's extremely comfortable. And I don't even have the tire to play. Like uh, I don't have the tire to play the tug or anything. It just handles really well. Yeah. factory and it would feel a lot better like uh i'll check on the sprocket size it'll be on the screen right now but a 62 would probably be about perfect on this i feel like the 72 two sprockets a little much but oh uh, yeah four more baby And uh, 
uh, we're going to do a video next on how long the one pound tank will last. Just hold it wide open. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to shut the propane off and turn on the fuel because we do have a full tank of fuel down there. So, from what I'm reading, basically, we're going to have to, like, I want to put a shutoff valve right here on this hose and bolt it. There's a bracket right here, I guess, for a tail light, and I'm going to bolt a ball valve right there. But for now, we just got to unscrew this and don't really know look at that is that safe no okay so now you're going to turn the fuel on on the carb probably have to choke it oh, turn the switch on never had gas in it so it's going to have to fill up for a minute yeah so the idle is different it's a little high for gas so you're going to have to re-idle it and it's kind of hard to get to with the air box on it. Well, let's see if there's a difference. No, there is no difference that I can tell in power. Oh, look at that. Was that a homeless shelter? Oh. So, yeah, right off the bat, I can tell you. There's not much power difference in gas and propane. But the bike, this little engine test me though. I like it. It does need idle down. Like it's at the point it's almost going to take off with gas. But propane is like perfect. have 
laughs just about this and we just like passed it up but this is a very bad i mean you can see the bottom falling out of it this is a very bad rust damage uh side by side so we bought this for a pretty decent deal to 900 we're going to basically fix this up for a work in a, a like a recovery vehicle but that's a winter time project once we get a few of the buggies done I don't want to start that. It should be tarp. I need to get it out, clean it up, and tarp it. We were trying to pull it up this hill with a tractor. The tractor got stuck, so I need to hook up my truck or something through the talons and pull it out of. completely out fuel lock up that back in now that holds on there very nicely i mean i'm sure you'd want to tap on that puppy let's choke it well it's honestly idled up a little too high for propane too it's right on the edge of, of wanting to take off on it. So I do need to be idle. I don't know. I swear propane has a little bit more power. Not much, but just a baby boy. Oh yeah, that just broke the Bronco, baby. <laughs> like I'm telling you for stock power it's pretty dang good I should be laughing at that I mean for for stock performance this is fun And the beauty about it is the regulator doesn't let propane through unless the engine's running. So you can leave your tank. I let this tank hooked up for two days straight. I need to lower this brake, by the way. Um, left it hooked up for two days straight, and it's the same amount of uh, propane's in it. And that's the only downside. You can't tell how much propane you got. But, of course, you can have uh, three-quarters of a gallon in this tank, I think it says. This is about sick. This is a sick little setup. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you want anything you've seen in today's video, you can always check out the links in the video description. Those do help us continue to make these videos. Sorry, I got helmet beard. Uh, but uh, I absolutely love these monster motos. Uh, you can call them a mega moto or a mega monster moto, but uh, it is our number two bike on our list. And I'm kind of torn about modifying this thing. I want to leave it exactly like it is, but you know the hot rod in me <laughs> wants to change it. But we got a ton of parts to make this thing sick, and we'll go ahead and link those down below as well. Uh, we do have to pull this engine apart to find out what you know flywheel fits it, what side cover. I'm assuming it's going to be non-predator side cover and flywheel, but we do have to pull it apart or clone. I don't know. We got to test that stuff out. So uh, make sure to check out those links. Let us know what you want to see. The next video we'll be doing is testing how far you can go on one tank of propane versus one tank of gasoline i know the gasoline is going to beat the propane but we'll see how it compares and stuff like that uh, and then we'll start the road to horsepower on this build while not changing that factory carburetor other than jetting it up for mule, more fuel but i'm pretty sure with propane you do not have to jet them up uh, the diaphragm kind of handles it but we'll see it's a learning project for all of us so thank you guys so much for watching uh, we'll see you on the next one we love you and god bless